I've just started my business, and a lender is asking for a personal guarantee. Should I sign it? My name is Andrew Ayers. I'm a business law and estate planning attorney with offices in Edina, Minnesota, and New York City. Today, we're going to take a look at a very common provision that a lender may ask for if you've just started out your business and you're going to be asking for money to help you finance it. We'll look at what a personal guarantee is, some different types of them, why you may need them, the risks of the personal guarantee, and then we'll finish up with some ways that you can minimize your risks if you're asked to take a personal guarantee. So if you're just starting your business, you may not have a lot of cash on hand, or maybe you need some money to buy some inventory that you're then going to sell to the public. And in that situation, we need to find a different way to get you some money for your business. Now, you can look to lenders, you can look to friends and family. There's a variety of different ways we can look for money to help your business get off the ground. However, if you're going to be doing that and your business just got started, or even if your business is still relatively young, maybe only in business for a couple of years, the lender may ask you for a personal guarantee. So first of all, what is a personal guarantee? A personal guarantee says that the business is taking on this debt. This business is being lent money by the bank. But the bank isn't so sure that the business would be able to pay the money back. It's a new business. Maybe it's only been in business for a year or two. There's not a lot of financial data about the business. So it asks for a personal guarantee, which means they're asking for one or more of the owners to sign a document that says, if the business can't pay this debt back, then the individuals who are signing the personal guarantee would put their personal assets at stake, meaning they could be the ones who are forced to pay it off. So especially if you're just starting a business in a retail location, your landlord may ask for a personal guarantee for that rent because the business doesn't have a track record of making money and the landlord wants to make sure the rent is being paid. So I usually run into three different types of personal guarantees. The first one is an unlimited personal guarantee. An unlimited one is one you want to be very careful of because that simply says that you are personally guaranteeing the entire amount of this debt. The second type is a limited personal guarantee. This one's a little more palatable for most people. And what this means is you're only going to be liable for a certain amount of the debt or a certain percentage of the loan. So you're not necessarily liable for the entire amount. And maybe you're not liable for the entire length of the loan. You're just liable for a specified portion of it. And then the third type we see when we have multiple people involved is we have a joint and several personal guarantee. Now, this is a very dangerous one if you have other business partners. So let's say you and two friends start a business As part of this personal guarantee, you're each signing it joint and severally. And what that will mean is that if the other two business partners can't make the payments, then the entire loan could fall on your shoulders. So hopefully you can see that all three types of personal guarantees can have a significant impact on your personal finances. When we're looking at the three of them, frankly, limited is the best one because we're looking at a specific amount or only a percentage of your loan. So as we talked about at the beginning of the video, When we're looking at what a personal guarantee is, the main reason why that these lenders need the personal guarantees is because there's no track record for your company. If you've just gotten started, you don't have an earnings history, you haven't sold for years and years, you're not going to qualify for financing. Think back to when you first turned 18, and let's say you've never had a credit card before, they're not just going to give you a $50,000 credit limit on your credit card. They're going to start small because you don't have a big earnings history Uh, just as you've turned 18, and it's similar for your business. So your business is brand new, doesn't have an earnings history, so the lender is going to want to make sure that if they're loaning you money, they have a way to be paid. And the usual way they will do that is with a personal guarantee. Let's look at four main risks you're going to have if you sign a personal guarantee. Number one, and the most common one, the biggest one you need to worry about, is it's your personal liability. So if you're signing on a personal guarantee for a loan from this lender or however much money is being financed, If the business can't make that payment, you are going to be on the hook, whether it's your rent for the space, whether it's money that was used to purchase inventory. If the business can't make the payment, then the lender has the right to go after your personal assets. So if you own a house, you own a car, you have personal bank accounts, the lender will seek to get their money from your personal assets if you're unable to make the payments to the business. Risk number two, there can be an impact on your credit score. So similar to the first example, we're looking at your personal liability. If you're not able to make those payments, then they can negatively impact your personal credit score. You can have judgments against you. You can have other financing dings on your credit. So if you're taking a business line of credit, they may actually ask for the personal guarantee and tie it to your personal credit history so that if the business 
doesn't make the payments and you don't make the payments, it can impact your credit score. And going back to the types of uh, personal guarantees, if we have a joint and several liability, we're even more concerned about that because then if your partners can't make the payments, that can actually flow through and impact your personal credit score. The third risk, as I was just saying, is the joint and several liability. So if we go into business with friends and everybody signs a personal guarantee, we have three, four, five, however many people signed off on this personal guarantee. If some people start defaulting and they can't make payments, whoever is left can be on the hook for the entire amount. So let's say your two friends file bankruptcy or they just rent and they lease their cars and they have about $5 in the bank account, whereas you own your house, you own your cars, you've got the assets that the lender can go after, not really your friends, and you could be on the hook for the entire amount. And the fourth risk of a personal guarantee is it can have an unlimited duration, meaning that it could last for the entire life of the loan. So let's say we actually have an office lease and you sign a 10-year office lease, you could be on the hook the entire time. And let's say you have friends on that you've started this business with and you've signed that lease and now you leave the business to go start somewhere else, unless you get out of that personal guarantee, which the lender or the landlord may not allow you to do, you could still be on the hook and personally liable for years after you've left the company and gone on to do something else. This is a significant risk that these personal guarantees can pose, especially when we have partners and someone may leave the business down the road. So let's look at seven ways you can minimize your risks under a personal guarantee. First, most importantly, negotiate the terms. So whoever's lending you the money is going to seek an unlimited one or a joint and several liability uh, personal guarantee, meaning that they want everybody on the hook for the entire amount of the loan. You can try to negotiate the terms, as I said, limit it to the amount of time you're with the company, limit it to a specific amount of the loan, limit it to a percentage of the loan. So whatever you can do to negotiate the terms so that you're not on the hook just in perpetuity for as long as that loan is on the books. Second, you can separate your account and assets. We don't want to commingle our personal assets with our business assets. That allows your lender to further try to prove to a court that they can go after your personal assets. When we're running a business, it's very important that we have a clear line between what's personal and what are business debts, personal assets, and business assets. Do whatever you can to keep these two separate, because especially in the case of a personal guarantee and a default on the loan, you want to keep as many of your personal assets out of the situation as you can. Number three, review your business's health. Make sure we understand the financial health of your business. If it doesn't look like this business is going to be profitable, I would really be hesitant of signing on the dotted line for a personal guarantee. You can find other ways to finance the business, but if it doesn't look like it's going to turn the profit for five to 10 years, rethink about whether you want to put your personal assets, your personal credit score on the line for this business. Number four, and it's important with anything in the legal world, understand the terms of the loan. Understand what the lender is asking you to do. Understand the terms of a personal guarantee. Understand what happens if some if a payment is missed. Just make sure you understand all the different terms of that document. A personal guarantee and some kind of a lender document is going to be at the end, usually just a simple one page saying, I agree to be personally liable. Don't forget to read the first 50 pages, all of the details of that loan, so you understand what you're actually borrowing and what those terms look like. Number five, that goes right back into number four, work with an attorney. So if you don't understand the paperwork you're being asked to sign, you don't know what the lender is asking for, you're not sure like the rate of the loan, how it's being repaid, what happens if there's a default, reach out to an attorney and make sure you review it with them before you sign it. If you're signing on with different business partners, you don't have to use the same attorney. You can have your own individual attorney and work with them to understand specifically what your exposure is on this contract, especially if there's a personal guarantee. Number six, instead of taking a loan, see if you can use collateral. Do you have some kind of asset in the business that you can collateralize against the lender? So if they're lending you $50,000 and you have some equipment that's worth $100,000, see if you can use that equipment as collateral as opposed to using your personal assets and a personal guarantee, which essentially makes them the collateral for that loan. And then number seven, look for alternatives. So a lot of people are uncomfortable with the personal guarantee, and we try to find ways to get around it. You can look for equity financing, for example. You can sell some equity in your business, meaning part of your ownership interest you could sell to somebody to bring in a cash infusion for what you need. You can look to the SBA, the Small Business Association. They have a set of loans that you can use. So these are a variety of alternatives that you can use. And hopefully you can see from a personal guarantee standpoint, we've looked at what it is, some different types, why you may need one, 
the risks that are involved, and then the seven different ways we can minimize our risks. If you have more questions, you want to set up a legal strategy session, you can go to my website, andrewmayers.com. There's a red button at the top of the page. You'll be taken to my scheduling page where we can set up a phone call. It's usually 15 to 20 minutes to go over where you and your business are in the process of obtaining some lending and whether or not there's a personal guarantee. If you like this video, you can hit the like or thumbs up button below. You can hop on over to YouTube or airslawtv.com to subscribe for future episodes. And just because you've been given a personal guarantee to sign doesn't mean you have to sign it. Make sure you understand what you're signing and its implications before you just sign on that dotted line.